So after I've received this email uh, saying you would like to give a TED talk here in Freiburg, I was like, whoa, what an honor. <laughs> but then I was like thinking about the topic and you know, they asked me to give a talk about big data today. And I was like, yay. <laughs> big data, yeah, that's my favorite topic. <laughs> and you know, um, we are working for some very large companies and the first meetings, they're like always the same. They are like, hey, we are generating these huge amounts of data. Please, can you take it and solve all our problems? And you know, sometimes it really feels like, you wanna stop poverty and hunger in the world? Use big data. You wanna prevent terrorism attacks? Use machine learning. You wanna replace a president? Hmm, I have an idea. What about if we build a deep neural network for that? And you know, after a while, like everybody's like thinking the same question. However, no one dares to ask it. And it's, what exactly is a neural network? <laughs> and to give you some more insights on that topic, I made a short video. So it's about me um, using a neural network while likewise generating data to improve it. So watch this, it's a game. It's called Quick Draw. Of course, it's from Google. And uh, my task is to draw some stuff. So uh, first of all, baseball. I see circle. Yeah. I see blueberry. Oh, I know, it's baseball. Very good. So next one is castle. So watch this. I see hockey stick. Four stairs. Four skyline. Oh, yeah, I know, close. it's castle. Yeah, very good. So this is the last one, fence. So watch this. I see gear. Four pants. No. Four lighthouse. No, it's not a lighthouse. Four jail. No. I see stitches. Sorry. Four swing set. Four camouflage. No. Four crayon. I see oven. Yeah, and obviously it's also not an oven. Um, so what you can see here is like two different things. So first of all, you can build a machine that is like very powerful and is able to identify my poor drawings. And uh, second of all, after I draw something completely different, the machine is lost. Okay, so completely lost. And before I tell you like the logic behind that, I brought a little picture with me and um, I would like to give you the chance to try it by your own, of course. So um, it's this. Um, I'm one of the co-artists of this beauty. Um, <laughs> I did this in cooperation with a young lady, so she is the daughter of a good friend of mine. And the question is, what can you see here on that picture? Very good. So, very good. So first thing I'm looking for is like in this area here. And believe it or not, but this is an elephant. And this is supposed to be a pig. And um, you know, this is a carrot. The question is, why do you know that this is a carrot? Okay, so why do you know that this is a carrot? Why is, I mean, it can be like a cat or let's say a bear trying to attack you. Well, it's because when you are like a little child, like your mother told you, this is a carrot and it's orange and it has like this shape and you can chop it in pieces and eat it because it's like healthy food, it's good for you, it makes you like big and strong. And after a while, after you are collecting more data, meaning you saw a couple of more carrots, your brain is finally able to differentiate cats from carrots. And this is exactly how a neural network works. So think about your brain as like a huge network of different neurons, and they're like all connecting to each other. Um, okay, so all the guys from Google, if they, if they wanna like build a machine to recognize carrots, of course they need data. And this is where the big data comes into play. So think about millions of pictures, and the only thing you need to tell the machine is, in some pictures are carrots, and in others there's like other stuff, like all the elephants and penguins and TEDx letters and so on. Now, of course you need to transfer these pictures into a machine-readable language, and then you feed it in, and then there's something happening, and I call it the magic in between. And this is like exactly when like your, your mother is telling you, hey little friend, this is not a carrot, this is an apple. 
the machine learns that in some pictures there's like a specific structure, a specific shape, and this is our carrot. And whenever you feed in a carrot, only the lower output neuron is like firing. And whenever you feed in, let's say, an elephant, then the upper neuron is firing, and that's it. So basically, that's all the magic behind neural networks. And yeah, question is, why is this such a hype topic? Why are so many famous people claiming that this is the next trillion dollar market? So the thing is, if you have a lot of data, you can build even deeper and deeper neural networks, and thereby you can recognize even more complex structures. Okay, so think about a car that is like able to identify and react on like crossing pedestrians or let's say other bicycles on the road or other cars. So this will make driving way more safe, right? This will literally reduce accidents to a minimum. And this is good for us, so that's very good. However, the general functionality is not changing, so it's still a car. It's still something that takes you from one direction to another, okay? So here's another example. So think about a doctor that is like scanning a patient's body to look for a tumor, let's say. So the doctor needs to be very highly educated, um, and he needs to view all these MR images to see if there is a tumor or not. So now you can use like millions of MR images, and basically you can teach a machine to do exactly the same job. And you know, don't get me wrong, that's really great. That's, that's a beautiful technology, and having all of that data in the world, you can do that. The problem is, that the real problem doesn't get solved. So there are still people suffering from disease. There are still people out there dying from cancer. You know, um, you are using artificial intelligence like every day, like every day in your life. So, for example, like your phone, like um, the voice, the voice of Siri, this is like the product of a neural network. Or let's say if you ever use Google Translate, this is a neural network and they use all the data you are generating to improve it. However, it remains a tool to transfer language, right? So it remains something that you can like feed in a sentence and it will translate the sentence from like one language to another. Um, so one last statement for today. Um, and e unfortunately, even with all data in the world, I don't believe that we can build a powerful enough deep neural network to replace presidents. However, there's hope. Um, I'm pretty sure that we can use this beautiful technology to solve a lot of problems in the future. Thank you very much.